Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com. Today, I'm taking your questions on electrical issues, stretch bolts, service manuals, and more. This is episode 181 of the Humble Mechanic Podcast. All right, in order to get a question on a show like this, email me. Charles at HumbleMechanic.com, right down here at the bottom. Put question for Charles in the subject, ask your question right at the top, mash the enter button a few times, then give me the details of your question. That way I can know your question while I'm reading through the details. It really, really helps me out, so thank you guys so much for doing that for me. Also, if you don't see your question on a show like this, be sure to check the Quick Videos playlist on YouTube, where I take one question per video. All right, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is CRP Automotive. CRP deals in a ton of OE maintenance and repair parts, timing belt kits, suspension components, and even fluids. In fact, they make the factory DSG fluid for Volkswagen and Audi. So check them out at crpautomotive.com. And one final thing before I get into your questions, thank you guys so much for joining the crew membership program. There were all the founding members sold out in about two hours, which is crazy. Thank you guys so much. I'll be sending that stuff out in the next couple of days. Remember, if you want exclusive videos, exclusive content, and discounts you can't get anywhere else in addition to VW Audi training manuals. There's a link down below where you can join the Humble Mechanic Crew Members Program. With that all wrapped up, let's get into the questions. First one comes from Kelly. Is it okay to reuse engine mount bolts? Just finished up the timing chain tensioner on my 2011 Tiguan. I know the manual says always to replace the bolts, but I've reused them in the past and never had any problems. First time I ran into this was a timing belt job on my 2000 in Golf. Went to the dealer to get the bolts, but they didn't stock them. They told me the techs never ask for them. I tighten them to the recommended torque and add only an additional eighth turn max. I know they're torque to yield and I understand the concept, but I'm having trouble believing that those huge bolts will fail if they're reused. I guess if you stretch them 90 degrees every time and did this several times, that could weaken them enough to break. But once or twice doesn't seem like it would compromise them enough to worry about what is your experience with these bolts. Thanks, Kelly. Great question. So there's two answers to this, like many things. The first answer is the repair manual says to reuse them. Therefore, you must reuse them no matter what, or your car is going to explode into a bajillion pieces, according to the repair manual. Now, should you replace them? Yes. Do they stretch? Yes. Have I seen these bolts get a little wonky and actually cause the threads on the mount that mounts to the engine get a little weird? Absolutely, I have. I've had to thread chase them out before. I've had to ta use a tap and tap them out before. I've had to do all that. But here's the truth. I've reused these bolts before and never had a problem. I know plenty of other technicians that have reused these bolts and not had a problem. Plenty of DIYers that have reused these bolts and never had a problem. So can you reuse them without a problem? Yes, absolutely. Should you? Probably not. Like Kelly said, you know, if you're tightening them to the torque and then torquing them 90, you're stretching them. And usually what actually happens is you wind up pulling the threads a little bit out of the mount rather than damaging the bolt. What I've seen do more damage to this setup, right, the mount and the bolts, is actually slamming them in with an impact gun, a big half inch, you know, full throttle impact gun. I've seen that do more damage than tightening them, torquing them, even torquing them 90. I like the uh, eighth turn or 45 degrees rather than a full 90, but you can totally do it. You probably won't have a problem. Like Kelly said, the second time, I might go ahead and replace them. By the third time, you definitely need to replace them. Um, and you know, this, look guys, this is, yes, by the book, replace them. That's it, right? But there's more to it. This isn't like we're talking about head bolts. If one of these bolt fails, it's a pain in the butt and it could be an issue, but odds are you're not gonna have a huge, huge problem. So in a perfect world, I would absolutely replace them every time, but I promise you there's really good professional technicians not replacing every single bolt that they're supposed to replace every single time. Like Kelly mentioned again, the big bolt, it's not quite as big of an issue. It's a not super critical. There's more than one bolt. So um, you know, while it's not the best thing, you're probably not gonna have any problems. All right, next one comes from Steven. Hey Charles, I'm a professional truck mechanic and I own a 16 Jetta. I would like to know where else to get service manuals other than paying a fortune for monthly or yearly access to Irwin. 
I've not been able to find any info or manuals on anything this new. Thanks, love your show, keep up the great work. Steven, yeah, I looked too, man, and I couldn't find it either. You know, if we travel back in time to the older vintages of cars and Volkswagens, you could get the Bentley factory manual, and I didn't, I wasn't able to find that on the new stuff, right, the 16s. Um, so here's what I would do. You can get a Chilton's manual, you can get a Hayes manual or a Haynes manual, whatever they're called. They're okay, but I don't love them. It's not gonna have great wiring diagrams. It's not gonna have all the procedures that, you know, especially someone that's already professional in the industry is going to be looking for. This is what I would do. I would go to irwin.vw.com. I would buy a one day subscription for $35 and I would download everything for my car, all the manuals, everything I could, and then store it and put it on a flash drive and make a backup copy of it, right? That's what I would do. I would get everything I could possibly get for my car. It's going to be a hassle. You're going to spend the day, you know, download, 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 but you're going to get it and it's going to be cheaper than the crazy like $1,500 a year subscription to Irwin or whatever it costs now. And you may not need that. You're only talking about one car, your own personal car. So doing it the one day and getting all the information is probably what I would do. You could even do that two times a year if you're worried about updates to information or changes or once a year. Um, they don't update it quite as much as you might think they should. Reflash guide from 2016 to February. Um, so I would do it once a year, 35 bucks a year, one day, and you're good to go. That's my best advice because yeah, paying a ton of money for one car, one repair manual is kind of crazy, but uh, that's really the best way to get around it. You're getting OEM information straight from Volkswagen. It's the same stuff we get. So uh, you're not gonna get anything more up to date than that. All right, next one comes from Drew. First off, love the show. Between you and Eric the Carga, I feel like I have our family's cars covered. Right on, man. My wife has a 14 Tiguan and has issues with the body control module. Our Euro shop quoted 700 bucks, not including labor. The issue started with a sudden failure in the windshield washer spray or lack thereof. In troubleshooting myself, I started with the basic places, lines, nozzles, fuses. However, this is where the problem arose. I took the fuse panel cover off to locate the fuse for the pump and had no clue. Why is it that VW doesn't label the fuse panel on the fuse covers or in the manual? This is my first experience with VW and it seems out of place. All other car manufacturers that I've dealt with have been labeled and numbered on either the cover or the manual. I'd hate to pay a shop a hundred bucks diagnostic fee to correctly find and name a blown fuse in the future. Our tech also said the BCM would correct the left turn signal. When activated, it sometimes randomly flashes quickly and speeds up only on the left stalk. The rights are fine and function normally. Thanks once again for your assistance and insight. Wish you and your family the best in the upcoming year. Drew, thank you very much. So. Um, why doesn't Volkswagen put this very critical information in the repair manual or <laughs> they really don't want to put it in the repair manual either, the owner's book or on the car? Dude, I have no idea, but let me tell you something. It is mind blowingly frustrating. You would think that you could have a little maintenance card and it doesn't have to be real specific like the Mark IVs and the B5s, B5 and a half's had just to get you close, right? I just want to get close. It's stupid, but to be semi-fair, it's probably because there are so many variants of fuse panels and fuse arrangements based on equipment that maybe it's too challenging for Volkswagen to figure out how to add a little tiny card or a little plastic inlay uh, in, in order to get that. I don't know. And I could beat this to death, but I don't really want to because I'm just gonna get so frustrated and it's not gonna help you guys at all. But for all of you that are frustrated that they don't have this information, in a very easy spot. I am right there with you. I think it's absolutely ridiculously stupid to not at least tell me where the stupid 12 volt outlet fuse is on every single car, because that is far and away the most replaced fuse that we have. But I actually have some pretty good advice on dealing with fuse issues. And I got to this point pretty much because they don't put these fuse locations in. I whip out my power probe, or you could use a test light, whatever you have, and I check all the fuses, every single one of them, because you may have a blown fuse or no fuse or a good fuse for the pump, right? For the washer pump. But maybe there's a really weird unlisted fuse for the body control module that controls a leg of power that then that leg of power controls the washer pump. See what I'm saying? So it might be a bigger 
global problem in the vehicle rather than one tiny isolation of a problem in the vehicle. So whenever I'm concerned about fuses, anytime, I get my power probe out and I check every single one of them to make sure that they're good. I also look and see if there's all the fuses installed properly. I actually did a video on this. It's a way old video. I think I shot it with my iPhone 3GS to give you an idea of how old this video is. I want to say it was my second YouTube video that I ever posted, maybe third. Uh, I'm going to link that up. I want you to go and watch that because I show you exactly how I like to check fuses. I'm using a test light in that video, but I really do prefer to use a power probe. I just didn't have my power probe at home and I needed to get that video done. So I would recommend just checking them all that way. You know, you may be only looking for fuse 37 in the SC panel, but fuse 15 of the SB panel may also influence the circuit and create the problem as well. So check them all, make sure they're installed. If on a Volkswagen anyway, if it's supposed to have a fuse in it, it will have two prongs one for each leg of the fuse. That's on the inside fuse panels. The under the hood panel has two prongs on everything for the most part, so that, doesn't, that advice doesn't really help there, but inside the car, if you look and you see two prongs where like two contacts would go, um, it's supposed to have a fuse there. As far as the turn signal issue, I haven't ran into that many small time lighting problems on the Tiguan. Of course, I hope they check the bulb and the socket all around the car, you know, all on the left side to make sure that it's not a bulb or a socket issue. These cars did have a problem with the fuse in the fuse panel under the hood. It's at the back towards the passenger side. It's a 30 amp fuse. It's supposed to be a coated fuse, but from the factory it wasn't and they got hot and would melt. There was a recall on a ton of them. Um, so you want to check that fuse again, all the way at the back of the fuse panel under the hood. There's a 30 amp fuse, which is green. It, uh, it can be melted and it can cause one corner or something wonky to function every once in a while. So I would check that first. I'm not saying the BCM can't do that. The BCM is basically the convenience module and the electric module on this generation car. So it, it could very well be causing both of your Tiguan problems really. So good luck, man. I hope that helps you check in fuses. Yeah, I don't think you should wanna pay $100 to have a, have a shop try and diagnose a blown fuse. Invest in a test light. I, honestly, I think invest in a power probe is, is even better if you have the budget for it. They're like 70 bucks. I still use my power probe too, to give you an idea. And I have many newer ones than that, but my two is always my go-to. Right. Last one of the day comes from Gabriel. Hey man, first off, love all your videos. They have helped me keep calm when something goes wrong. Right on, dude, that's awesome. Anyway, I have an 04 Passat V6. So what happened was a couple of days with rain, I noticed my alarm kept going off randomly and it's been over two months and I can't seem to find the problem. I've read some stuff online talking about comfort modules, but everything seems fine. I replaced some relays and hope to fix it, but I don't know what else to do. Also, I bought the car salvage from a friend and I replaced the driver and passenger airbags plus the module, but forgot about the clock spring. Would love your feedback based on many years as a mechanic for VW and also an owner. I would love your opinion. Thank you very much for taking a moment of your time for, and for your video content, which is awesome. Gabriel, thanks dude, appreciate all that. I'm glad that I can help calm the situation. I feel like a lot of times I don't do that. Um, so let's talk about your Passat. When it rains, the alarm goes off. That's key, okay. First thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make sure the driver's floorboard carpet is not wet. You can't just touch the carpet and see if it's dry on the top. There's about this much room between the top of the carpet where you put your foot and the body of the car. And what'll happen is that'll fill up, fill up, fill up the convenience modules under the carpet, and then it'll fill the water resistant box for the convenience module. And that can cause all kinds of weird issues, alarm issues and everything like that. If you want to get deeper than that, this is what you need to do. You need a scan tool that'll talk to all of the modules. So something like VAGCOM or OBD11, you need to go into the convenience module address word, which is 46. You need to go into measured values, either 14, 15, or 16. There was a number switch, and I forget which way it goes. I want to say, like my gut's saying 15, but it's one of those three. You're going to get a number, and then you're going to scroll, especially in VAGCOM, you're going to scroll, and it's going to give you a list of the alarm sources. So this will tell you what is actually setting the alarm off. Is it the door latch? Is it the hood? Is it the radio? Is it the trunk? It could be any of those things. You know, the, the trunks were good about getting water in the connector, corroding the connector, and causing problems with the alarm. Door latches fail on those cars a lot. Could be a door latch. Or your convenience module could absolutely be underwater. 
Um, this is a really common thing, not today so much as it used to be when that was like the new hotness cars, you know, 04, 5, 6, 7, 8. I was doing wiring repairs on those things all the time. So in the driver's floorboard, the convenience module, the module that controls all the electrics on that car basically is underneath the carpet. On the passenger side, the transmission computer's underneath the carpet. So, oh, and of course, water leaks, sunroof drain clogged, windshields leaking, pollen filter housings leaking. All that water runs right into the floorboard. It's awesome, right? So then you pull the module out and it's like a geyser of water coming out of it on either side. And the boxes aren't watertight, they're merely water resistant. So first thing, get underneath that carpet. You're gonna need to take the dead pedal out. You're gonna need to take that lower A pillar trim off. It's really easy. You don't need to take the seat out but I like to have that A-pillar uh, trim off and the dead pedal cover anyway off, and it slides up. Don't just pull on it, you need to slide it up towards the dash and then pull it out. Lift the carpet up, the carpet and padding are attached together. Um, you also wanna probably pull the uh, door sill trim up, that just pops right up, it's pretty easy. Don't do any of this when it's cold, by the way, you'll, you'll surely break it. Um, cold and moving plastic is a too bad combination. Uh, so check that, man. Odds are you probably got some water underneath the carpet and due to maybe a windshield leak or a sunroof drain clog. Check that. Hopefully that helps. Uh, hopefully you can dry the, con the uh, convenience module out and you don't have to replace it. You don't have to go through repinning the 41 wires or whatever that go to that connector. I've had to do it, you know, this much, this much, this much, and I've also totaled cars because that corrosion went so far back into the harness, it was more expensive to replace the harness than it was to crush the car, which sucked. But it was what it was, as they say, because it couldn't really be anything else. Gabriel, I hope that helps. Great question, man, and uh, good luck. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Questions, comments, you know what to do. Hey, if you like this video, throw the thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe right here on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Snapchat. And remember, if you want exclusive content and discounts to places like Sonic Tools, Eurowise, MT Knives, S&P Automotive, and more. Be sure to join the crew membership program. There is links down in the description so you can check that out. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.